The original trial, um, and the classically the way a lot of emergency trials um, operate, used something called proxy consent. So you have consent from the patient, which in a head injury trial, by definition, you can't do. Um, the next best thing um, in the world of uh, a research is to find a proxy or a family member or legally authorized representative uh, to provide the consent. And basically what they're doing is they're saying, uh, this is what we think the subject or our, our family member would want, um, and we're okay with this study as well. So that's what proxy consent uh, is about. And in PROTECT-1, the first study that we did, we used proxy consent. The problem with proxy consent is that it takes time. So it can't be used if you've got to get a drug in really, really quickly. And, um, the, and, and we actually proved that in, in, in the PROTECT study and many other studies have shown this, that it takes on average four, six, sometimes even more uh, hours to sort of sit down with the family member, describe, first of all, the condition. So the, the, the treatment team separately needs to go in and talk to them about the condition and the, you know, what's expected, and then a study team comes in and then talks to them about the study and the risks and the benefits, and all that takes time. So for this study, um, for the, the PROTECT-3 clinical trial, um, we are operating under a very, very special condition called EFIC, uh, which is exception from informed consent. Um, this is an FDA-approved process. Uh, uh, so we had to submit all of our materials to the FDA to get their approval to do this. Um, and essentially what it means is that uh, as soon as the patient meets criteria, um, then they can be enrolled into the study and, and given the drug. Um, this, this is a very special process. You have to meet uh, very rigorous criteria before the FDA will allow it to occur. Um, an example in why traumatic brain injury fits is that there has to be no really good alternative therapy, which in traumatic brain injury, there's none. Uh, it has to be a devastating disease or one that is life-threatening, and of course, traumatic brain injury meets that criteria. And there's a number of other, other things that you have to meet. And then you have to go about doing community consultation before the study starts. So you, you go out and gather up members of the community and you talk to them about this trial happening in their community, get suggestions from them, provide them information, see if they're uh, for or against the study. Um, and by the way, for PROTECT, uh, over, over 85 to 90 percent of the people agreed that this was a good thing to do in the community. Um, and then we also have to do at the end of the trial something called public disclosure, which we have to release the information to the public and really try to get it out there um, of what the results of the study were. So those are just some of the requirements of the FDA uh, EFIC um, process.